Zambi ya Mazulu Mpungu Tulendo so nini na nini somandla gai murungu mwenenyaga depending on where you are i greet you no siemi betwa bumbote bana ba yisolele mulweni abantwana abangone muriega shana shangai na kenda moyoro mpo salama watoto wa Mungu dumelang Sawubona abantuana babao weto oswe mazuluini. Yes, it's that time we sit and rightly divide the word of truth. And today we continue to blow their lies into spitterings. Dayo. Let's get right into it. The Bantu people of Kenya, Banabeto, claim a common myth of origin, language and culture. The word Bantu means human beings. Bantu is the plural form of Muntu, Muntu in singular. And there are several tribes and ethnic groups affiliated with the Bantu tribe. As such, each tribe or ethnic group has its own distinct language, not simply a dialect. Naturally, however, their languages are related to one another. Scholars have identified them as being of one family stock. Linguistic researchers report that the ancestral Bantu language, Proto-Bantu, originated from the grassland area of Cameroon and adjacent to the Benu Congo region. This argument is based on the fact that linguistically, the Tif, Efik, and the Duela languages of Nigeria and West Africa are the closest relatives to the Bantu languages. From there, the study of the history of the evolution may have taken different directions. And this is exactly why we are here, to find out the truth. Each group in search of its livelihood, anthropological and linguistic studies indicate that around 2,500 years ago, Various Bantu speaking groups settled around Lake Victoria. They are known as the Great Lake, the Great Lake Bantu. From here, again, each group dispersed to different parts of Kenya, according to the myths and oral stories narrated by the Bantu elders from different groups. It was evident that they originated from a mystical place called Misiri, King Gibiti, or Egypt if you prefer. Misri is the Swahili word for Egypt. Using the Sutu and the Swana and Guni as a datum for Eastern and Congo, and the Chokwe for the Western Bantu, I found that the Chaga and the Swahili conformed, but the Ila Tonga, Bemba, Kamba, and Kikuyu were not Eastern Bantu. Archaeological correlation suggests that the early Iron Age, Chifumbanze complex was produced by the Eastern Bantu speakers. In marked contrast to the Naviundu slash Madingo 
Kaya tradition in Central Africa. The late Iron Age, Luangwa tradition represents the spread of Western Bantu speakers into Central Africa, which formed the matrilineal belt. The Kamba, the Kikuyu speakers may have moved into East Africa as part of this spread. At about the same time, Nguni and the Sutu Swana speakers moved out of East Africa where they lived during the early Iron Age. Get this, the Nguni and the Sutu Swana speakers moved out of East Africa where they lived during this Iron Age. And uh, this map here depicts, we have the Proto-Bantu nucleus here. We have the Congo nucleus and we have the East Highland nucleus. And you see the migration from the lake and those that headed south. And there are those that went inner into the East Africa. Now, which brings me to the presentation for today. The word Ngai is the common name for the supreme deity that is almost universally shared by all Bantu people of Kenya. All the Bantu people living in Kenya believe that they belong to one big family. Thus, the Gusi, one of the Bantu tribes or those that speak Kisi, now commonly known as the Kisi people, acknowledge that at the time the ancestors dispersed from Misiri, they belong to one and the same family with the ancestors of Kuria, Meru, Kikuyu, Kamba, Luya, and several other ethnic communities. The Gusi elders, and get this, fondly refer to all the Bantu as Abanto Bamito, Abanto Bamito, which means our people. From their myths and oral stories, it appears the Kikuyu people believe that they are the descendants of Gekoyo and Mombi. These two people descended from Mount Kenya, Kerenyaga, as they were shown a land by Ngai to settle. The man, Gekoyo, the founder of the tribe, was called by Mogai, the divider of the universe, Kogaya, from the, the root Raya, which means to divide. As his resting place, when on his, when on, uh, on his resting place, when on, on an inspection tour, and as a sign of his wonders, so Ngai took Gekoyo atop Mount Kenya and showed him the land that was there. Mark you, Mount Kenya is the second highest mountain in Africa. So that would give it a very good elevation. And this would, um, collaborate this story if we are reasoning together Banabeto. He then took the man Gekoyo to top of the mountain of mystery and showed him the beauty of the country Mogai had given him. While still on top of the mountain, Mogai pointed out to Gekoyo a spot full of fig trees, Mekoyo, right in the center of the country. And after Mugai had shown Gikoyo the paranoma of the wonderful land he had been given, he commanded him to descend and establish his homestead on the selected place, which he named Mokoroi Nyagadanga. And the place still exists in Moranga County, Kenya today. Before they departed, Mugai told Gikoyo that whenever he was in need, he should make a sacrifice and raise his hands and Guy would come to his aid. We see this is the same way that Dawidi, the king of Yisolele, would, would pray. The history of the origin of the Kikuyu people further confirmed that through their linguistic and historical studies of the Bantu migratory patterns, that the Kikuyu belong to the Bantu speaking tribes who came from Nigeria and Cameroon by the year 200 BC, by the end of 1000 BC, a number of Bantu speaking tribes had spread south to the savanna lands of Angola and the east area of Lake Victoria. 
This fact is supported by the following text quoted by H. Wambogo. Over the next 1500 years, they scattered throughout Central and Southern Africa, interacting with and absorbing indigenous populations as they spread. The group that entered present day Tanzania spread through Central Tanzania, leaving some group like Wanyamwezi. Before splitting into two groups, one headed south towards present day South Africa, the Nguni or the Ngoni, while the other group headed towards the coast. Some of the groups that were left at the coast are the Shaga, Mijikenda, and other Bantus of the east coast of Africa. The migration continued westwards to present day Kenya, to the present day, uh, to Kenya's present day coast to leave behind the Wataita or the Wadavida, if you prefer, near Voi. Those who continued westwards left their Kamba in present day Ukambani area of Kenya as they proceeded towards Mount Kenya. On the Eastern slopes of the mountain, they left the Ameru and they went on and they left the Aembu before ultimately crossing the mountain to settle on the Western slopes, Moranga as the Agikoyo. This historical version agrees in total with the legend of Gikoyo. According to the legend descended from the mountain, the community, according to historical fact, crossed the mountain to their current home. In the Ameru traditional legend of origin, they indicate that they came from Mpua, the great ocean. This shows that this is the group that came from the coast. Now, Banabeto, when I look into the culture of the Agikoyo, they speak of the four mountains, Kirenyaga, Kiajahe, Kiambiroiro, na Kiangai, or what you call Menengai, or what the, those of Luo descent would call Kotmungu. It is also known as Gatigido. And this mountain, from what I've gathered through oral traditions and wisdom of the ancestors, Gatigido was where the ancestors would speak. And there was always a fire that was ascending. Have you, have you had that story before? And should the ancestors consult you, for them to release you, you had to leave what we call Rotudu Ruambake, which basically was snuff, as in the picture depicted here. That is an ivory snuff container. Snuff would be uh, some species of tobacco. And I just had to read this because it em embodies what we are trying to do in this exercise of reclaiming our history. Without starting abroad, one can know the whole world. Without looking out of the window, one can see the way to Yamazu or heaven. The further one goes, the less one knows. Therefore, the sage knows without having to star, identifies without having to see, accomplishes without having to act. Going back to the mountains, if you are to draw a circle around those mountains and split them, you would have what is the Congo Kiwadu. I have found very close relationship between the Agikoyo and the Maasai because, for example, the town named Naikuru, Nakuru in Kenya comes from the um, Maasai time, Naikuru. And the white man would call that the Menengai crater. Father, Investigating this, I found that there was a great prophet and seer by the name Wangai, 
who was compelled by the Mundele upon the arrival to perform certain rites on Menengai, which would mean Menengai, the mountain of Ngai. And the signs and wonders that would be seen are no longer seen. I urge you to look further into that, Panabeto. Zaphon and Yamin, you created them. Tabur and Hamon, joyously praise your name. It might be disconcerting to some to learn that the Hebrew Bible has so blatantly preserved elements of the Canaanite mythology. We are used to thinking of the Bible's radical message of monotheism, wiping out all remnants of polytheism that came before. The story of Elijah vanquishing the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, another sacred mountain, in 1 Kings 18 is the most famous, famous example of the anti-Baal theme. But alongside this mode, the Bible contains many verses that retain the ancient Baal image, imagery in application to its date. The most famous example is the term cloud rider used in Psalm 68 4, which almost exactly reproduces one of Baal's names. In a fascinating passage, Jeremiah lashes out at the foolish people for worshiping idols of Baal, and at the same time, he brilliantly applies much of Baal's imagery to the one God. So who's fooling who in these scriptures, Banabeto? Can we really use this as the basis to understand our history? But the Somandla, the true guy, he is the living guy and the everlasting Nkosi. At his wrath, the earthquakes and the nations cannot endure his indignation. Thus shall you say to them, the gods who did not make the heavens and the earth, I tell you, Vanabeto, shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. It is he who made the earth, Gai Morungu Mwenenyaga. Which brings me to this. There's the key rope. And there is the ankh. See, the ankh represents the feminine and masculine aspect of divinity. The ankh is based on the feminine principles of nature, spirituality, and peace, dial. But the cross, the common error, if you remove the womb from the ankh, this, if you remove the womb from the ankh, you get the cross. And the cross, once you remove the womb, the, 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 where the life comes, what you get is death. When you remove the feminine principle from the symbol of life, what you end up with is death, Banabeto. The cross, the key row is death. Rore, it's called Rore, Roa Agiriki. And let me just explain this in a very simple analogy. You see, among the Agikoyo, the man would sit on a three legged stool. Yes. Representing the father, the mother, and the son. And the female would sit on a four-legged stool. Our culture, our history has always been symbolic of what we've had, the spirituality we've had from inception. Which now brings me to today's presentation where I will be tracing the Agikoyo history back to Egypt. I should at this point let you know, I am from the ruling class of Maina, Amondo Mogo, and the son of Amunjiro, Dai. The 
the Itweka, the Itweka ceremony or what was the Hepset in Egypt is the name of break, is the Kikuyu name for break, rapture, revolution, transformation and transition. Sorry about that. At Itweka Literary plat uh, Platform, we believe that by centering the writing and teaching and translation of African language languages, we can transform African societies. The Kikuyu were ruled by a generation of elders. When the generation in power reached of age, the age of retirement, the generation in waiting paid fees in goats and an Itweka ceremony was organized. This happened every 30 years. A cycle of nine names was used to identify each ruling generation. And since it was a fixed cycle, the generation in waiting knew in advance what their name was. And as we are going to look at consequently, is a list of the nine Itweka names. And I'm going to start with Madhavi. Madhavi, this was during the reign of Thomas III. Ma is a prefix and the root in Thavi or Toth. This is the earliest period in the collective memory of the Kikuyu. Thomas III, sometimes spelled as Tahut, ta, tahut, Tahutmes or Tutmosis was a pharaoh in the 18th dynasty from the first 22 years, for the first 22 years of his reign, Banabeto, Tutmosis was co-regent with his stepmother, Hatsheput. You see, these names keep repeating themselves. When we look at the Banguni connection to Kemet, now we are looking at the Agekoyo connection to Kemet, and you can't make this stuff up, Banabeto. You just can't. As I said, the wise sage does not have to act for an action to come into play. The first female pharaoh ever is recorded to have ruled between 1504 to 1450 BC, had Shepherd, who was also called Makare, or if you ask the Gikoyo, they'll tell you, Wangoa Makare or Wangoa Makere, celebrated a hepset, the equivalent of an Itweka, as recorded on an obelisk. It is likely that 30, uh, that 30 year Jubilee celebration merely, merely fell into her reign and was not of her own making as some Egyptologists have theorized. It is around this time that a group of East African men and women were acquired by Hatsheput, the woman. The women were called the Angoi, the Akiaki Bantu word for leopard, the leopard people. Does that sound familiar, Banabeto? You decide. Makare had Shepherd's other name meant leopard, and it would appear that these women were her property. The men prob probably took the interim name Madhavi, Madhavi before taking on the name Gikoyo when Thomas was in full power. So the name Gekoyo, I put it to you, is not even 800 years old. Originally, they would have been the Kapiro, Kafiro. And Kabiro simply means the dark ones, those with the life force. And as we have seen, Ka is the life force or spiritual double of a person. The royal Ka symbolized a pharaoh's right to rule, a universal force that 
passed from one pharaoh to the next. Ba is represented as the human-headed bird that leaves the body when a person dies, the soul. The, the face of the bar or the spirit was the exact likeness of that of a deceased person. Kabiru, where do we get the word Kabiru? From the root Biro. Biro is suit. So ka, Kabiru would be Kambiro, the life force in the melanated ones. Die, and that's where you get Hebrew from. And that is where, and that is why we are insisting that the Kabiru are what those people in the Levant plagiarized and took their identity and they termed themselves as quote unquote have Hebrew because a, 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 a different version of Kabiru would be Habiru. Habiru would mean the place of Kabiru. Ha denoting a physical locality, Ka representing the life force. So we would say Habiro, Halena, Kapiro. The place of the Habiru has Kabiru. Thy. We proceed. Thy. When Thomas was in full power, Gikoyo Mukoyo, the Saikamo was a pharaonic title besides the fact that Saikamo was a sacred tree to them, those in King Gipiti. A Saikamo tree is called Mukoyo in Kikui. Where have we seen that again? You decide. The present Angoi clan of the Agikoyo is also called the Aivigeni, Aiviageni. I will be doing the nine uh, clans to completion. I will also be doing the nine Congo ancestors. I will also be doing the nine Guni ancestors. We are not just going to be throwing out information there. We are going to do a forensic analysis for Naveto. I, I, I just present this information in a way that you can consume and do further research because I urge you to do further research. And let's have this sharing of information. Right. Aidageni, which is Akiaki Kikuyu for those in a foreign land. Ageni, from the root Geni. Mogeni means um, a visitor. It is noteworthy that the Kikuyu call a leopard Ngare. and not Ngoi, as do many other Bantu groups. They seem to have adopted the word for it. The Maadazi generation gave birth to Chira or Shira. That's why you'd get my name, my ancestral name, Washira. Shira. About the God, uh, Toth, in another aspect, besides as a scribe, Toth was the heart of Ra, the heart of the seat of intelligence, and writing was a physical manifestation of intelligence. When we write, we're just taking the information, the Sophia, for those in, still stuck in the Hebrew roots movement, and the Darth, and Sophia combined. Shira or Shira, the root of this word is the verb Shira, to give birth. Scholars agree that this generation signifies excessive growth of the tribe. And I put it to you, Banabeto, that this growth took place after the fortunes of a small captive group changed for the better. It was understandable that had Sheput at the, uh, as the first female pharaoh in King Gibiti had given her captive, captives and servants such freedom as was not available to their lot before. This is especially so for the women 
And we can understand how at one time, according to the legend, Kikuyu women ruled their men. And that is why they say, uh, in Kikuyu, they say, Totigago ne akarege. But this was in inference to Isis on Javi, if you prefer. It is it's very interesting that the Kikuyu women adopted some items of clothing that were the, the preserve of men in Kingibiti. I have said was likely to have been celebrated during the reign of Tom, Thomas the third who ruled for 54 years, 26 as a core regent. A woman is called Motumia in Kikuyu, and it seems women were associated with the olive trees. If the sycamore was the sun, then the olive would have been the moon. This generation gave birth to Ndemi. Ndemi, this generation is associated with writing Ndemoa. Ndemoa is um, letters and numbers. Demwa, ask any Kikuyu to verify this for you. I cannot make this stuff up, Manabeto. From the from the verb tema to cut, to inscribe, to cut on stone. You see, inscription you're cutting into stone. Some writers have associated the term with clearing fields for cultivation. That cannot be true when other evidence, as I have said, is shown. Letters in Egypt were cut or incited into stone when Thomas III eventually took over from Hatsheput. He put everybody to a lot of work on his monuments. It is reported that almost all the great temples existing in Upper Egypt, Tanahisi, no, the Tanahisi was lower, Tanateru would be upper, uh, upper Egypt, the land of the gods, at the time were enlarged while they ordered the building of the new ones. Hmm? This required artisans to work the stones, Banabeto. and to assist the scribes in writing the hieroglyphics. Even if one did not actually write on stone, the event would be so important that everyone would want to be associated with cutting and incising. Naturally, isn't that? We call, we've seen it happen, trending topics. You know, we want to be associated with the trend of the time. Thy. Thomas III extended the borders of King Gibiti to include the lands that are now known as Ethiopia, Sudan, Arabia, Armenia, and Kurdistan. That's how powerful Abantuana Abangoni. Wow, we brought civilization to the world and yet we are the most despised. Die. Thomas III was succeeded by his son, Amenhotep II. It is likely that Ahepsed was celebrated after Amenhotep II took over from his father. His mother was the famous Mutemuya. Mutemuya, Mutemuya, the great olive. An olive tree is called Mutamayo in Kikuyu. Look at the phonology, look at the phonetics. Direct correlation, nothing to do with Greco-Roman language, nothing to do with Yiddish. 
These are Bantu words, Bantu names explaining Kemetic history. I mean, we, we have to be insane not to examine this, the correlation is impeccable. It was a sacred tree of Kikuyu women. Then Demi generation gave birth to Iregi, the rebels. Iregi, this means rebels in Kikuyu. This generation is associated with the rebellion against Amun. Now, Amun, get this, by Amun Hotep the fourth, who changed his name to Akanaten. Right, we have done the Bantu Akanaten connection. You see now, this bits and pieces Banabeto, pieces of a puzzle that are coming together. Undisputable facts. We cannot deny this existence, Banabeto. We cannot continue to pretend that this did not, is not in existence. In association with the rebellion against Amun by Amun Hotep IV, Maina, if you've been following the community page, I've explained the ruling classes. Marika Nimeri Mawada. There are two ruling classes, Maina, who is Irongo, and the ruling class of Mwangi. Mwangi was supposed to take up the rulership from Maina, but for some reason, I do not know if you watch the video I did with Mudamaki Gademba a while back. He explains this, the Agikoyo Sia. We changed his name to Akanaten, Tene, meaning ago, when he took over in 1350. The Hepset was likely to have been celebrated when Akanaten was co regent with his father, Amenhotep the Third. The rebellion was against, and get this, the rebellion was against the worship of the state religion, which had strange hold on the population. Note that a state house is called the Ingira wa Iregi. House of the rebels in the Kikuyu language. Yes, the state house, the Ingira wa Iregi. This title for the ruler's house was initiated by Akanaten. Who was the Kikuyu? Who was the Kikuyu of Kikuyu migration from Egypt? Do you understand now? Akhenaten, the great sycamore of the Kikuyu migration from Egypt. Now, do understand? That it's very easy to be confu to confuse the Kaviro the Okabi and the Karinga. The Karinga are those that did not live for King Gibit. The Kafiro are those that left for King Gibit. And if you look further into Kemetic history, you will hear of what we call Zagisho. The Shashu. Right. The priests of Amun were rich. We looked at this. As we were looking at the Akhenaten connection. This title for the ruler's house, oh, sorry decreeing that none should be worshipped but the son 
God at 10. The, the one who created the sun, the one who was personified as the sun. At Tene, the ancient of days. Tene means ago, ancient. So at 10 would basically mean the ancient of days. Right. Whose rays were always shown holding the ankh. What is the ankh? Feminine principles of nature and spirituality. A man and a woman come together. In a woman's womb, life is birth. But you see, if, 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 and allow me to, to, to use this to explain. If we are to look at the cross, it's, it's a, repre a representation of the male phallus. What you choose to do with that information is entirely up to you. Right. Ankh, the symbol of life, it implies that the generation sided with his actions. Akhenaten went to great lengths to erase inscription with a moon on monument art. Acts that no doubt infuriated the nobles and priests. The Iregi gave birth to the minor who are also named in memory of Akhenaten, whose religious belief they had now adopted. Maina is from Amun in Amenhotep, Akhenaten's name before the change. The Ankh, this word, is the root of the Gikuyu word Ogima, Ankh, Ogima. And the Luo word Mangima, both meaning health. Ohima to the Gikuyu for the Luo, who are the river lake Nilox, uh, uh, sorry, river lake Nilox, the seed of Japheth. Yes, they want to make you believe that we descended from Ham. No, they've been telling you who Ham is along. Hamburg, Nottingham, Southampton. Should I even go on? It's, it's very obvious. But where was, where was Japheth to tell? In the tents of Shem. That is why you find the Maasai, who are Nilots, live very closely to the Agekoyo and the Maasai were well, one of the major reasons that the Mundele could not acquire slaves from the mountain region. They were fierce warriors. Die. Mina, the name, the name is the first of the generic names. It must be a marker. Oh, hold on, no, 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 no. I'm, uh, I'm jumping the gun, forgive me, Vanavito. I know sometimes when, you, when you're preparing these presentations, you have, you have the knowledge in your head, but you have to present it in a way that it is presentable. Right. The word is the root of the Kikuyu word Ogima and the Luo word Mangima, both meaning health, as will be apparent. It is also the root of the name Mwangi and the Egyptian name Tut Ankamen. Maina. This name is the first of the generic names. It must be a marker of the monumental stage in the history of the Kikuyu. I have deduced that this generation is derived from Akhenaten's original name, Amenhotep the Fourth, and though it is a grim reminder of the banished God, 
and his priests, it is associated more with the peace that reigned in the land, Zayo. That is, well, that is what is called the Amana period. Mana, Amana period, Mina. <coughs> Zayo. Despite that, the fact that Petri and Ali Egyptology stated that there is no record of Akhenaten's celebration of the Hepsen, and I'll tell you why. He believed that it must have been, it must have taken place. The fact that the Kikuyu ha have this minor that precedes Mwangi in testimony, his testimony, uh, Banabeto rather, that it did take place. A Hepsen did take place because every ruling, uh, ruling generation, 30 years, a Hepsen has to take place. Itweka ceremony, if you prefer. The name Maina shares the same roots with the Kiswahili word Amani, Amaina, Amani, meaning peace. Egyptologists agree that the Amana period was a peaceful era in the 18th dynasty. This minor generation, this minor generation gave birth to the Mwangi generation. I belong to the Mwangi generation. This generation was associated with Tutankhamen's rise to the throne after Akhenaten's flight from Egypt. Moa, the Moa in Mwangi and Tut in Tutankhamen are prefixes. The root in Mwangi is Angi, Anki, Ank, Moa, Angi, Moa, those, those that have Ang, Angi, the Ank. which is corresponds with Ankh in Tutankhamen, so that it's not rocket science. I hope you see it. Mina was the father of Mwangi, just as Akhenaten was the father of Tutankhamen. Akhenaten took flight at about 1334 BC. The Itweka ceremony in this generation may not have been celebrated in King Gipit. since the pharaoh or the great house and his followers were in full flight. However, the Kikuyu, and plus remember he reigned for 26 years. A Hebsed was held after 30 years, do the math. However, the Kikuyu and, uh, however, the Kikuyu and Egyptians may have held the ceremonies concurrently since the timing was reckoned by stargazing Aravi this generation in flight gave birth to Shoka, meaning return in Kikuyu. The use of the word Shoka return implies that the Kikuyu had arrived at, at the ancestral lands, the promised land, Sub-Saharan Africa, from where they had been uprooted in the first place. It is at this point that the returnees call themselves Gekoyo as followers of the fleeing sycamore, whom they also adopted as their symbolic father. This was in an effort to forget their tribulations in King Gibiti. In any case, a sycamore tree was also sacred in Egypt. And the other word, and was another title for Pharaoh, the great house, the tree of life. The Meru, who are all Imenti, the Meru is a, is a Bantu group in Kenya, living on the slopes of Mount Kenya. People of the mountain, Imenti, which means people of the mountain, commemorated this departure by forming a new group known as Tigania, which means abandoners. Netwa Tigania, Ntoa Tigania Morome. Tuete, Ntoa Tigania Morome. The Meru will enjoy that. Bye. Now, Choka or Moirungu, uh, also called Moirungu, 30 years after the installation of Mwangi, a section of the next generation was born in Mount Kenya area by the first batch of returnees. The generic name for them would be Maina. These were the shoka, those who returned, 
Shoka is also called Moirungu or Irongo. Moirungu is Akiaki, is Akiaki Kikuyu to mean the one who is underground, Morungu. Rungu means underground. Mu is a prefix to denote a human, Muntu, Mondo, Moto. Moirungu therefore means the one who is under. Moirungu was later pronounced as Murungu and came to mean Ngai. That is why we say Ngai, Murungu, Mwene, Nyaga. Rungu means under, Ruguru Akedo. which was the custom of ancient Egypt to deify a departed leader. This means that Gekoyo, the leader, died within the reign of this generation and was buried in the Mount Kenya area. Did Akhenaten die soon after arrival and was interred and his remains interred? Why haven't they been able to find Akhenaten's remains? It is debatable whether the Shoka, the Chuka, Chuka, Chuka is a is a subgroup of the Meru in Kenya, which are Bantu speakers. It is debatable whether the Chuka ethnic group of Mount Kenya region derived their name from the verb Shoka. This association of returning, perhaps the Mbere ethnic group also of the Mount Kenya region was always present as the remnant group that received the returnees. Mbere means fast and is related to the Hebrew word Bershit, Mbere, bere shit. Take that to the bank, Banabeto. Can't make this stuff up. If you, could, if you want to continue to fool yourself, then this is the time. The information is there. In your ignorance, your ancestors winked. What excuse do you have now? You want to call it coincidence? I repeat this so that those in the Hebrew, those speaking that Yiddish, fake Yiddish language, trying to say it's a Bantu tongue, listen, this is where they got it from. Mbere means the first and is related to the Hebrew word Bereshit, the name of the first book in the Bible. From this point, we know that more returnees continue to come in different waves. It is likely that those left behind by the shoka call themselves something different. Hence, the many intelligible dialects of Mount Kenya region. The next two generations had two different names each. This may indicate that some groups did, did a government changeover and Itweka, the Hepset, the breakaway, in isolation and commemorated events with names that were unknown to the people already settled in the Mount Kenya area. That's why you have the Kabiro and the Karinga. This may indicate that some groups did a government changeover and they took a and commemorated events with names that were unknown to the people already settled in Mount Kenya area. This would have been the Goomba. I have concluded that the Gishokia dance, a dance among the Gekoi, which is described, was used to commemorate the return to ancient ancestral lands over 1,000 years ago, perhaps even 3,000. 
Now we look at the Shororo or the Muigaru. Uh, honestly, of research, at uh, this point, I've been unable to decipher the meaning of these two words. The generic name for Shororo would be Mwangi. One group which was likely lost and became, because Kwagaga means the wanderer to move from place to place which was likely lost and came across a people who had iron working knowledge, adopted the name Morigaro instead of, of the one by those who had already arrived. Morigaro may be in association with the heat, Orugare. Orugare is heat. Like if I want to say it is hot, Orugare, I'm feeling hot. If I want to say the the stove is hot. Rico, Reno, Rugari. As would be expected when working with hot furnaces during iron working. This generation, known by its two names, gave birth to Shuma, also known as Manduti. Shuma is iron. It would appear that this age group commemorated the acquisition of iron working skills. Almost 100 years after the flight from King Gipi to Egypt, Shuma pronounced as Shuma in Kikuyu, means iron in both Kikuyu and Swahili, Chuma, Chuma in Swahili, which was introduced by the group that had been previously lost, having superior iron weaponry. It is likely that a lot of evil was committed by those arriving with the technology. The other name for this generation, Manduti, that is why any seer will not, will not speak of the Manduti. I urge you, I will put the link in the description of the video I did with Mudamaki we come from the same order. It's an ancient order of guardians of the secret. It has survived colonialism under the stewardship of Moroa Mundo, our Gekoyo. The other name for this generation, Manduti, has been translated as evil doers in ancient King Gipiti. Iron working was associated with Set, a god of evil. That is why when 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 we do the 42 negative affirmations, and then we make, well, in the initiation, we say we have conquered set in the water and refused the principles of Isifet, Ububi, a pie pie, evil, Ububi. Because the opposite of the mad principles is its effect. Ububi, a pai pai, evil. When they were integrated sufficiently, the evil was probably visited on other enemy communities that did not have iron working knowledge. Now we know why the Goomba came extinct. And at this same time in history, if we relate the bloodshed, wipe out those that you will find in the land. The name Manduti also means the ugly ones. The generic name for Shuma would be. 
aina. After this generation, the Kikuyu were well settled into the mountainous area where they developed a siege mentality and proceeded to isolate themselves. A Kanaten was in danger of being pursued by his enemies in Egypt. His people therefore went to great lengths to hide him. The woman in the harem, Seraglio, were adopted as Gekoyo's daughters and the myth of Gekoyo and Mombi was crafted. Thy, the other young guy, thy, thy, the other young guy, thy, thy, the other young guy, thy. Kirenya Vagiveru, Kiroa Taira, Kiroa. Kembo, Kembo, Tata Nanzambi, Yama Zulu, Mpungu Tulendo, Sonini Nanini Somandla. Gai Murungu Mwene Nyaga. Yes, Banabeto, consider that information. Do further research. And as always, I have bound it as a frontlet on my arm. Thy and thy, those are my guiding principles. Supplication to the one true deity, Gai Murungu Mwene Nyaga who my people in the Congo know as Tatanan Zambi, Yamazulu, Mpungu Tulendo. My kingsmen in the South know him as Sonini Nanini, Somandla, Nkulunkulu. Yes, the ancient of days. We will no longer have our history told to us by our enslavers. May your minds be led to the place they were conditioned not to go. Until next time, Ingeta Magubenjalo, Dial. Rise of a nation sounds from a liberated Bantu. All praises to Sonini Nanini. Amanda Vanna Bermuda. Rise of a nation sounds from a liberated Bantu. Hey, it can be Bantu. You take care of